Hey guys, it is your girl Jade Ashley and I am back for a new video of When The Beat Drops. And like always, you know I'm here to give you my 5 hottest beats in music. So of course you know you have to stay tuned for more. Okay guys, so let's dive into this week's beats. So my first beat of this week, I'm sure you know I have to talk about the 2017 Grammy nominations. Now you know there's been a whole bunch going on since these nominations were released. But then again, the Grammys is like the biggest music award show. So whenever the nominations drop each year, it's always a lot going on. So um, I guess we can just run down just a few key people because it's like so many categories so many nominees so uh first things first is let's talk about beyonce so beyonce she is currently nominated for nine awards and i think she's like the first female to be nominated for a whole bunch of grammys in one cat in one night or one award something like that she broke some type of record to where she's like the most awarded or something like that and I think like um this past summer she um broke the record of being the only artist to have like the most uh video music awards at the VMAs so you know that's Beyonce she'd be breaking records so you know she's um nominated for categories I'm not gonna read all nine categories but you know album of the year record of the year song of the year best urban contemporary best music video and let's be honest like we all seen this coming when we were like oh my gosh beyonce where's your new album because the last album she had before lemonade was her self-titled album which was released in 2013 so you know everybody was harassing beyonce like girl we need a new album like what's good so then you know she dropped you know lemonade did the whole like visuals you know went over the entire world <laughs> went to just about every award show except for the Soul Train Awards she was not there but you know so no surprise here we knew Beyonce was going to take a good amount of you know of the nominations and nine times out of ten she's going to win a good amount of the awards that she's nominated for but one person that will be going head to head with Beyonce and again this is no surprise is Adele you know she has her album 25 out and you know she you know took a break so um i know she had like record breaking numbers like a certain amount of weeks at number one i think the album is already diamond like 25 was definitely received well when it dropped at the end of last year and even coming into 2016 the album still did amazing numbers so it's no surprise that she you know has some of the biggest nominations so you know like um certain categories that her and beyonce will be going head to head in is album of the year record of the year song of the year you know like the real big ones so i mean when it comes to like adele and beyonce and their nominations not surprised so um one person that i was so excited for so 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 excited for was chance the rapper now he has a total of seven grammy nominations now one thing that makes his grammy nominations um you know very special is first things first is he's a independent artist he is so adamant about not signing some major label and he pretty much you know got his buzz you know built his popularity you know just by being an independent artist and I know that um, a lot of people want to go like the independent route but you know he for him to be young at that like and you know pretty much just taking the rings of his career and doing what he does he's just amazing so you know he has like best new artist best rap performance best rap song best rap album and which makes his um nominations you know pretty special is that his album Color and Brook there's no physical copy of that CD. You can only stream that. So, and this is the first year that, you know, streaming, like, you know, projects that are, you know, streamable have been eligible to be nominated for Grammys. So, shout out to Chance the Rapper because he, he, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him to take a good amount of those awards home, you know, out of the seven that he's nominated for. But, um, other than that, you know, we have Rihanna. She has a total of eight. Her, you know, nominees also include Record of the Year, Best R&B, Best R&B Performance, Best Urban Contemporary, and a host of others. But one thing I have to say is Beehive and Navy. Please cut the shits. Please. Sitting here arguing with each other, you know, well, why Beyonce got this? Well, Rihanna's better than that. And da 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 this and that. She's gonna, like, 
stop creating this stuff y'all look slow like beyonce and rihanna they're they're not thinking the way you guys think like they're just worrying about making their money you know making their music and that's that and y'all take it above and beyond to the point that rihanna actually had to say something on social media and basically say look there's no beef between me and beyonce we're not mad at each other like damn eight nominations like come on one short of beyonce talking about anti was better than lemonade and da -da -da. like cut the crap cut the crap navy and beyonce cut it please but other than that, um, Drake had a handful of nominations, and as well as Kanye West. Um, you know, Kanye, his album, The Life of um, The Life of Pablo, was definitely highly anticipated. So congratulations to both of those rappers. Um, other people that I'm happy to see that their names were mentioned, whether it was like one or two nominations, uh, Solange, um, she, um, got nominated for Cranes and Scott. Can't remember the category, but she got a Grammy nomination and you know when her album dropped, it was definitely like the talk for more than a week. Definitely. Uh, Tory Lanez. Y'all know I love me my Tory Lanez. I done did the whole um, album review and everything. Uh, I saw that Love was nominated. So shout out to Tory. Uh, BJ the Chicago Kid. Definitely underrated. Anderson Pat Definitely underrated. You know, Remy Ma and Fat Joe. They got like two nominations. So, you know, for all the way up. So I'm happy for Remy Ma. You know, congrats to Remy. And yeah, so... Um, is is everybody's kind of like oh you know Grammy's so black and da -da 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 this and that who's gonna win? I'm just like look, we just gonna have to see how much of these categories and how many of these awards we're gonna be seeing given out because nine times out of the ten, you know Grammys they starting to pull like the regular award show you know stunts where we see like five awards given out, the rest of them is given out before they even arrive to the show or they win, and then you know we gotta sit through rock and roll and no offense to rock and roll and country, but like rock and roll and country performances throughout the entire show to the point you were like why the hell am I watching the Grammys? But other than that, I mean just to get the title Grammy nominated so congrats to everybody the Grammys go down in February 2017 and of course you know when it goes down I'm gonna have to talk about it for sure but other than that we're gonna move into my second beat of this week and I have to talk about the VH1 Divas event now I'm currently in the process of doing vlogmas so if you guys have not watched my videos for vlogmas definitely go watch them number one you can check the playlist on my channel and you can check under vlogs and you'll see my vlogmas videos and in my first vlogmas video i actually was vlogging a little bit at the vh1 divas event i was actually there kind of like working the event and working the red carpet which i am forever grateful for for the opportunities that i've been granted within 2016 and this was just i think like my last red carpet event my third red carpet was my last red carpet event for 2016 but um yeah, so I figured I'd just talk about the show a little bit. Um, I have probably a little bit different of perspective because I was able to also attend the show aside from just, you know, covering the red carpet. So I was able to, like, watch these performances in person and, you know, probably get, like, a... A, a, a different feel and a different view than you would get it from your television so uh the first person i have to talk about is mariah carey so i was excited for mariah a lot of people they kind of been playing mariah you know as far as like you know she don't sing like she used to but i was excited because you know this is a christmas show and we know mariah carey is like the queen of christmas so i'm like i hope mariah slay i hope she kill you know i still have hope in mariah i like i said you gotta respect pay your respects to the legends and stuff like that so i never really try to talk down on mariah carey but this is my first time seeing mariah perform live and the setup was cute the dancing and the outfits everything was cute but i'm gonna let y'all know right now mariah carey was the only performer from that night that was lip syncing she's the only person that did not sing live and i was very disappointed um now i don't know if it was because you know in past performances you know people have been calling her out i know she had like a residency in vegas so i know she had to get her voice together by then so i'm like come on mariah like what the hell why could you not sing live like literally everybody else was singing live and this was a taping you know this happened last week um friday and the show aired this past week monday so you know some songs had to be done over and Mariah was just kind of like, let me perform and we ain't see her after that. <laughs> like, dead ass. So, um, Mariah was not singing live and I was disappointed because I really wanted to see her sing live. Um, but I did see her on the stage. So, I mean, 
I saw her perform live, but not sing live. But um, other than that, I have to talk about Miss T. Anna Taylor when she did Santa Baby. Now, I've been doing one of beat drops, what, going on like three years, three and a half, what, two and a half, going on three. So I've said in numerous videos, even if you have to go back, that Tiana Taylor is definitely underrated. If you can like at least go to like my album review for her album Seven when it came out, I always talk about how she's underrated. Like, you know, she's starting to get her hype beat, especially after she did like the fade video. But I'm like, bruh, Tiana Taylor been talented. Her body been crazy. And you know, I was excited to see that she was listed as one of the performers as one of the performers and you know, one of like the headliners of Divas, because I'm like, girl can blow. We know that she could dance, we know her body is crazy, whatever the case may be, but this girl can sing. And you know, she did not let me down. Like she, the character, the outfit, like just the voice, like uh, y'all just now finding out, but I've been new Tiana Taylor was talented as hell. So, um, other than that, I was so, so excited to see Shaka Khan and Miss Patti LaBelle. Now, when you want to talk about legendary, legendary, now y'all know I got my music family, so Shaka Khan is my grandmother by music, and on the carpet, I was literally like this close to her, like right in front of her. Like, you know, I didn't get to talk to her, but you know, like I did like a photo, but like that is the closest I've ever been to an icon and it was amazing. She did amazing on stage, you know, Patti LaBelle did amazing on stage and then when they came out to perform together, that's that that's a real divas event right there when you want to talk about divas and singing and you know putting on a hell of a show that's what you're gonna get two legends shaka khan and miss patty labelle and i was so happy that i was able to witness that in person for sure um other than that vanessa williams vanessa williams did an amazing job as well sometimes i forget vanessa williams can actually sing but she did an amazing job as well but the only thing i could think about when i was watching her performance is I want her to do that um, song from A Diva's Christmas Carol. Her film, A Diva's Christmas Carol, is one of my favorite Christmas movies. So she's sitting there singing and I'm like, oh, what if she do a song from A Diva's Christmas Carol? But she didn't. But regardless, she sounded amazing and looked amazing on the stage as well. But if you guys checked out the VH1 Divas Unsilent Night special as well, definitely be sure to comment below and let me know your thoughts on the show. Other than that, we're going to move on to Kanye West. Now, this is pretty, this is not really like new, but I haven't really done like a wanna be drop since like this whole Kanye thing, you know, kind of happened. So I just kind of want to give like my two cents just to go on video to say something about it, I guess you could say. But, um, so we know that Kanye, um, you know, he was having problems with his St. Pablo tour, you know, canceling shows and the shows early. Then eventually the whole tour got canceled. And then like literally, I think this was like, what, two weeks now, two weeks ago, he was hospitalized for like a, um, for like a breakdown and stuff like that. And I feel for Kanye, not like feel bad for Kanye, but understand Kanye. Like, um, I know that one of the, the things that I read that kind of like triggered his breakdown was it happened towards the end of November was that um you know it was kind of caused by the anniversary of like his mom's passing or like the anniversary of the day that he buried her so as somebody who lost my mom as well I can understand you know his feelings like and we all know since he lost his mom he has not been the same you know he might have had his happy moments because you know he got married he had kids and stuff like that but I think we all can say Kanye has never been the same since the passing of his mom. So to know that, you know, the breakdown might have something to do with like the passing of his mom. I get that firsthand, without a doubt. Uh, I read somewhere the prescription, uh, it was like a mixture of prescription pills. It was just so much. And you know, people make jokes over the Kardashian curse or whatever and yada 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 this and that. Um, I just say pray for Kanye like regardless of the jokes that goes on because you know we might get a little hee hee ha ha out of him but you know just like pray for him and stuff like that like this man just got like a whole bunch of uh, Grammy nominations so it's like obviously he may be going through some things personally but he's still a talented artist um I'll be honest The Life of Pablo is definitely not one of my favorite albums from him but obviously it still does something and it still reaches people his art so I just say pray for Kanye I'm hoping that he bounces back um I was listening to the college dropout not too long ago and you know he got the whole um old Kanye or whatever but like 
that man is like a musical genius so i kind of hope that he like gets himself together like straight mentally and stuff um you know and he just comes back with better music you know at the end of the day i say use your talent as your you know outlet to kind of like express yourself so i'm sure that um when the time is right he'll use his outlet and it'll be in the music and that's all i have to say so um other than that we can move on to my fourth beat of this week and this is actually not a uh this is news that kind of broke last week but I didn't really see too many people talking about it, so I guess I can talk about it as well. So, um, and because I didn't do any beat drops last week. But, um, Jamie Foxx, he will be producing a limited series on the life of Marvin Gaye. <laughs> now, me, I've said in the past that I love shows like unsung and behind the music like i look at those as like my music history lessons like and i'm just ready to sit and watch and learn and like oh that really happened or that's how you know so um in the past they've tried to like come out with like a marvin Gaye biopic but y'all know that means family they don't let nothing fly they don't let a goddamn they don't let a fly fly like they don't let nothing fly so they um it was a it was a it was i remember seeing a preview to like a biopic and that movie never came out and you know they had something to do with it because they did not get their blessing but um the series that jamie fox is producing they definitely gave their blessing for it and also marvin gay's son marvin gay the third we he will be serving as like an executive producer on the project barry gordy gave his blessing for the project and stuff like that uh jamie fox he said in a statement about the project he said i've been a huge fan my whole life his brilliance in music unparalleled Mar marvin gay's story has always fascinated me and me as well because i remember doing a uh, paper on marvin gay somewhere in high school so for me to like you know read about like his musical accomplishments and to learn that he was killed by his own father like in a they had like a little argument or something like that and his father never had like a good relationship since he was a kid so i mean there's just so much that can be learned and can be like transpired into like this new generation so um as of right now there is no uh I guess scheduled shooting date uh where it's gonna air or you know a projected release date or nothing but uh because you know the family gave its blessing i'm hoping that it's something that's going to come very soon because that's something i'm definitely interested in seeing for sure but other than that i have to move on to my last beat beat and i said this very last one for a reason and that is the return of mr germain aka j cole like i like when i saw that he was coming out with a new album like i promise you it was a whole bunch of happiness just came over my heart i was like j cole is coming out with new music and what was so funny to me was that i was watching the video for love yours on youtube and i'm like bruh it's been too long i was like 2014 and we about to end 2016 and there's still no new music from j cole and then just one day you just go on itunes and you see that he has a new album out or a new album coming out called for your eyes only but by the time you guys see this video this album will definitely be out so what i do want to talk about the documentary that he released right after the news broke that he was releasing a new album so he released a documentary called eyes and basically it was pretty much like the um like the hbo series he did when he was doing 2014 Forest Hill Drive as it was leading up to like the big um the big concert that he did in his hometown and stuff like that so it's kind of like you got to see like the studio what well, the only difference with that is you know you got to see like the studio part of it like we're making the album and you got to see him like on like the road and stuff but this you basically got to see like the creative process that went into this new album for your eyes only and one thing that i can say that i love about j cole like not only see a lyricist but like he's a, a artist that knows what he wants so i like when i see him you know with different musicians and he's like yeah yeah that's dope can you play this key a little bit different or you know you you almost had that note just do it one more time or see him like draw inspiration from just like the littlest things like um uh he was watching a video someone showed him a video of a song from the jungle book and i don't know what that's going to transpire out to be but i'm so here for it just seeing how you know dedicated he is to his music um one thing that i kind of like took away from it was in that you 
kind of got to understand why it took him so long to come out with this album because like I said 2014 and 2016 is about to end so but um one thing that he said was that he's 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 the type of artist and I think we all know this that he's to himself so he's not on social media he said he's not you know in headlines and all of that other stuff to him it's only about family and making music that's it so but by him not being out there like that you know he's kind of like disconnected from the people so he don't know how people feel and stuff and that kind of like you know cuts off his inspiration and he's left in like a spot so that was you know one of his explanations and stuff like that he also talked about using his platform to say a lot of things that people you know just keeping it real basically and saying things that some people might not even want to say in their music and then you know he did give us a taste of new music when he dropped uh, I guess you could say like the video. It, yeah, because they, they were released. So videos to um, Everybody Dies and um, The Prophets song. What's the, what's the Robert song? Uh, False Prophets. Yeah. Everybody Dies and False Prophets. And it's like first when Everybody Dies was going like he was just like rapping. Like he rapping. Like he's a real rapper. Like a real lyricist. And I was just sitting there like yo this shit is so dope. And then like the whole False Prophets. And you know everybody they sit there they be like well who is he talking about so you know uh one artist that you know kind of like responded to like the whole one of the songs which is Pro um false prophets was wale you know he dropped his um song you know groundhog day and <laughs> shit groundhog day was dope too so you know you kind of feel like yo this is real hip-hop like it's real dope and you know everybody thought they had beef but you know wale he posted a video of him and j cole at like a basketball game they're cool and i'm just excited for this album so definitely if you're watching this just know that when i get my hands on that album and i'm listening to it i will definitely review it for sure but like i said by the time you guys see this video the album should be out so, um, yeah, but other than that, those are my five hot beats of this week. Okay, guys, so I want to thank you for tuning in to this week's video. And, of course, you know I have to end every single video by reminding you guys to comment, like, subscribe, and share. It would greatly be appreciated. Unfortunately, I have no notes to leave you guys with this week. But, of course, you know I have to leave you with my song of the week. And my song of the week gonna have to go to Miss Seven Streeter. Recently, she released a new song of her upcoming debut album. And her new song is called Before I Do. Now, you know, she's been releasing songs but this one song definitely has me for sure everything else been okay but this one for sure I was like okay seven you got me you got me listening so her debut album girl disrupted drops next month in January and I'm so excited like it's a long time coming two EPs amazing writer amazing singer so I'm so happy but this song right here for sure out of all the songs she's been dropping off this new album I can guarantee you guys are gonna love it and she already has a sexy new music video to go along with the track so if you want to check it out in its entirety you can head over to my blog at www.jade-ashley94.blogspot.com once again I thank you for for tuning in and I will see you guys next time so bye hey guys thank you for watching and don't forget to share and subscribe and I will see you all next time